Hello everyone, I hope you've been staying busy and safe. Welcome back to our online ESL class for the Literacy Council. After the brief introduction in Spanish, we'll get started. Hola a todos y bienvenidos de nuevo a nuestra clase por parte del Literacy Council. Espero que se han estado manteniendo seguros y ocupados. Bueno, vamos a comenzar. Before we begin reading our lesson for today, let's look at the vocabulary that we will be seeing in the article. Um, the article we're reading today is about the Venus flytrap, which is a plant that you'll be able to find here in North Carolina. So let's look at the vocabulary. Paragraph one, shed light on, two, subtle, three, genetics, four, ingenious, five, novel, six, entice, seven, crawl, a, new or unusual in an interesting way, b, move slowly along a surface like an insect, c, help to explain something by providing further information about it, d, so delicate or precise, as to be difficult to analyze or describe. E, clever, original, and inventive. F, attract or tempt by offering pleasure or advantage. G, the study of the characteristics that pass down from one generation to the next. Paragraph two, collaborated, evolutionary, sequenced, genome, Ancestor, trace, digest. H, find or describe the origin or development of something. I, an early type of animal or plant from which others have evolved. J, the complete set of genes or genetic material present in a cell or organism. K, work together on an activity, especially to produce or create something. L, Break down food in the body so it can be used for bodily functions. M, relating to the gradual development of something. And N, find out the order of amino acid in a protein, DNA, etc. All right, so look for these words in the article as we read it. And um, then after we read it, we'll go over the vocabulary together. The article we're going to read today is about the Venus flytrap, which is a plant that is native to North and South Carolina. And here is a picture of it. It's a very, very interesting plant. So I just wanted you to sort of look at it before we started reading the article so you could have an idea of what we were talking about. As we read the article, um, look for the words that we saw in the vocabulary list at the beginning of the lesson, and then after we read it out loud, go ahead and put it on pause and then read it out loud yourselves, and just work on the pronunciation, or look for words that you haven't seen before that you want to look up. So let's get started. How Venus fly traps developed a liking for meat. New research sheds light on how carnivorous plants like the Venus flytrap developed a taste for meat. A study from the University of Würzburg in Germany suggests that subtle changes in the genetics of plants led to some becoming carnivorous. These changes led to the development of some of nature's most ingenious species. Carnivorous plants adapted novel and devious ways to entice and snare insects. The Venus flytrap uses clam-like leaves that snap shut when an insect crawls between them. The pitcher plant is shaped like a vase. Insects go inside and then cannot crawl up the slippery slides. The sundew plant has long sticky leaves which roll up after insects get stuck on them. Researchers in a variety of fields collaborated in the study. They included 
computational evolutionary biologist George Schultz and plant biologist Rainier Hedrick. They sequenced and compared the genomes of carnivorous plants to non-carnivorous plants. They discovered that meat-eating plants developed from the same common ancestor about 60 million years ago. Dr. Schultz said, we were able to trace the origin of carnivorous genes back to a duplication event that occurred many millions of years ago in the genome of the last common ancestor of the carnivorous species. Dr. Rainier added, the function of these genes is related to the ability to sense and digest animals to utilize their nutrients. There were two other carnivorous plants that were mentioned in the article, and I just wanted to show you a picture of them. This is the pitcher plant that they mentioned, and this one is the sundew plant. Both of them are very, very fascinating. Let's go over the vocabulary matching that we did at the beginning of the lesson. Number one, shed light on is see, help to explain something by providing information about it. Two, subtle, so delicate or precise as to be difficult to analyze or describe. Three, genetics is G, the study of the characteristics that pass down from one generation to the next. Four, ingenious, is clever, original, and inventive. Five, novel, is A, new or unusual in an interesting way. Six, entice, is F, attract or tempt by offering pleasure or advantage. Seven, crawl, is B, move slowly along a surface like an insect. Paragraph two, collaborated, is K, work together on an activity especially to produce or create something. Nine, evolutionary, is M, relating to the gradual development of something. Ten, sequence, is N, found out the order of amino acid in a protein, DNA, etc. Eleven, genome, the complete set of genes or genetic material present in a cell or organism. 12, ancestor, oh, let me see where that one connects to, is I, an early type of animal or plant from which others have evolved. 13, trace, is H, find or describe the origin or development of something. And 14, digest, break down food in the body so it can be used for bodily functions. So hopefully you did well on these. If not, just put it on pause and go over them again and just try to think of how they were used in the article. I found this really fascinating video on YouTube from Science Insider and I'm gonna play it and just listen to see if you can pick up any of the vocabulary words that we looked at earlier. When it comes to deadly predators, plants generally don't come to mind. After all, they're typically at the bottom of the food chain. But the Carolinas are home to one vicious vegetable, the Venus flytrap. Using its famous trap, it can catch prey faster than you can blink. But what happens next inside a Venus flytrap? Funny thing about Venus flytraps, they don't usually trap flies. In fact, winged insects only make up about 5% of their diet. And we really ought to be calling it the Carolina spider trap because that's really, it's only found in the Carolinas and actually a little piece of the Carolinas and it mostly eats spiders and, and, and ants. But of course, regardless of species, that bug is going to have a bad day. It all starts when the victim wanders into the trap possibly lured by the bright red hue or fragrant scent, or maybe they're just unlucky. We think the spiders mostly just blunder. The trap itself looks like an open mouth, 
It's made of two pads attached to a hinge. On each one of those pads, there are usually three little trigger hairs in a kind of a, a triangle. And those trigger hairs uh, are very, very sensitive to being disturbed. The first time a spider knocks into a hair, it sets off an electrical signal, sort of like the electrical currents in your brain. That signal starts the countdown. If the bug escapes within 20 to 30 seconds, nothing else happens. That way, the plant doesn't waste energy. But if the bug brushes against another hair, snap! In just 100 milliseconds, about four times faster than you can blink, the trap slams shut. Then the trap rapidly goes from convex to concave on each side. And the long little uh, spikes on the rims of the pads interlock to form kind of a cage. Now, of course, the spider isn't happy with this turn of events. So it tries to escape, which is exactly what the plant wants. The more the spider struggles, the more it knocks into the trigger hairs, the tighter the trap closes. And after an hour or two, the trap locks completely. Cells on the edges of the pad secrete moisture, which glues the edges together to form an airtight seal. Suddenly, that trap isn't a mouth anymore. It's a stomach. Digestive juices flood into the closed compartment, dissolving the spider's soft organs. And the trap's lining sucks up that nutrient-rich slushy. After about a week, all that's left is an empty husk the spider's exoskeleton. Next, the trap reopens and the husk tumbles out. The trap is now ready for its next meal. But bugs aren't the only food the trap captures. Just like leaves on other plants, the trap's surface contains a green pigment that lets it convert the sun's energy into sugar through a process called photosynthesis. So then, why bother with the bugs? Well, Venus flytraps live in acidic, waterlogged soil that doesn't have many nutrients. So instead of slurping up nitrogen and phosphorus through its roots, it needs to borrow some from the bugs. That explains why it shares its home with other hungry carnivorous plants, like pitcher plants and sundews, which could only mean one thing. North Carolina is not a fun place to be a bug. I hope you enjoyed the video. I found it very fascinating. In the video, one of the professors or the professor mentions that the plant is native to North and South Carolina and to a very specific region. So I found a map in smithsonianmagazine.com and it shows you where exactly the plant is native to um, so I thought that was pretty fascinating. So I will, in the next slide, post the true and false and the synonym match so that you can do those on your own. Hopefully you learned something new this lesson and stay safe and busy and I'll see you guys next week.